I won't allow the repeat of NSAS protests in Nigeria, says the president of Nigeria, Mohamed Buhari. Now, wow, my people, want to welcome again to my channel. In case today now your first time, please consider to hit that red button below that says subscribe. Beside it, there's a notification bell. The essence of that bell is for you to get notified each time I upload a new video. So you will be the first to check it out. Yes, yeah, so my people, I don't come again with another obongelistic gist. Our president, way in name na Muhammad Buhari, Abi na face Max Buhari, I don't know. In don't come out, can say in no go agree for another second chance or the another, uh, another protest, NSAS protest for Nigeria. As the Nigerian people, angry youths, them come hear this news, nine them paranoid, say that one no go happen. Because the answers never still end, the poverty never still end, corruption never still end, that they will continue to be doing that, as in the protest, answers protest, until the thing go really, the matter go really enter government for a year. It be like, say, waiting the masses, they do no consign the politicians and the Nigerian government. So, as I see this video, I say, no, make a bring and call. So, my beautiful people, don't forget to drop your comment below so I will know what you think about this video. We be say I bring calm and uh, please make una try to share this video for on friends and families. Make everybody they hear, they see what thing they happen for our Obodo Nigeria. So I decided to drop this video here. I beg stay tuned and watch this video until you hear from me again. Bye. The president of Nigeria, Muhammad Wari, has vowed not to allow the repeat of NSAS protest in Nigeria again. All right, it's another edition of Bias in the South East Things on Flip TV. Of course, still Michael Adek, Lekki Penetri, right here with you at Urban News 10. Behind the camera is first source, Lekki Penetri, on Flip TV. And we are here to review what we have on these two journals, the New Telegraph and the Vanguard newspaper. What are these uh, dailies uh, telling us this morning? Quickly to what we have on the front page of the New Telegraph newspaper. The president is saying something very, very crucial here. I won't allow the repeat of NSAS protests in Nigeria. I won't allow the repeat of NSAS protests. On to the next one, President, Council Pali over security challenges. We have police keeping mom as terrorists abduct 12 ESPs. My husband asked me to sell our house to pay ransom. My husband asked me to sell our house to pay ransom. We have other stories right here on the front page of this journal. Quickly to these stories. Something about Umayi. What is Umayi saying? Umayi has defected uh, to APC. Of course, Umayi was a, a former member of the People's Democratic Party. And right now we have Umayi in APC. I am dumping PDP for APC to protest injustice. That's what Umay is saying. I am dumping PDP for APC to protest injustice. What is the vanguard saying? I won't allow repeat of NSAS protest. That's what the president is saying. Muhammad Bwari, again, right here on the front page of this journal. As security chiefs express concern over bandits, kidnappers, activities in North. Police around Africa shrine to prevent NSAS meeting. Court grant NSAS protester Eremoselli, one million naira bill. And we have NSAS right here on the front page again. Governments must dialogue with youth. That's what APC governors insist on. Government kidnappers on the prowl. Government kidnappers on the prowl. All right, these are the stories we found and read out to the viewers on Flip TV. On to the next one, which is our reviewers for more topical and good analysis right here at the next time. I'll be right back. The president made such laughable statement and ridiculous statement. As for um, our constitution, simply allow protest. Sub 
section 52, subsection 2 of the 1999 constitution has that amendment allow freedom of speech and still allow protest. If you are if you are aggrieved or being cheated, you have every right to go on watch. Peaceful protest, note, peaceful protest now. He is saying he would not allow protest. He should go to his home. Nigeria is bigger than just one man. He is, he is not the name of Nigeria. Everybody owns Nigeria, irrespective of who he is. He should say that to his wife. He should say that to his son, Yusuf. He should say that to his daughter. And then all his kingsmen in Daura, not Nigerians. Because Nigerians will not sit back and fold their hands if they have been cheated. Now, you've not met or met with the agitations. Now, you are saying you would not allow protest now. Now, in your watch, every, every good, every good now have now what skyrocketed. Under your watch now, petrol price what has now increased. Under your watch now, unemployment has what has what increased. Under your watch now, Nigeria could not afford access good what healthcare, good road, good all the social means amenities of life. Nigeria now live below one dollar again and now people are now agitating for good governance you are busy there in what as rock enjoying enjoying taxpayers money you are not saying that you will not allow voters again mr we are not in what banana republic one more cannot owe the country in so ransom if it is he is the president he is the president to himself, president to his foot. He does not have any constitutional power. Co nobody has the word constitutional power to say that there will not be protests. Look at the English alone. The English looks somehow queen. Queen English. Let me tell you. Let's call spade a spade. When Buhari speaks English, Mike, you would have known that his English doesn't sweat. So, who made that statement on Vanguard? I won't tolerate another NSAS protest. Let me tell you, I won't allow or tolerate. Allow, they are the yeah. same. Let me tell you, it is not from Buhari. The dead Buhari, the late one, would not have said that if he's alive. The one from Sudan that died last year of coronavirus virus, would not have said that if he could be alive. Then this current one, Buhari, current Buhari, is from Niger. I, I don't think he could own that statement. Mike, let's disown him from that statement. He's not the one that said that. It was the cabal. But it's, it's CPS the name Buhari. Thank you. The name Buhari is just another platform. It's a platform now. Sudan was there. The first people. Now the second person people to be there is Niger. Buhari is a name, a platform. Who is the mask under the mask? Who is behind the mask? Is the question you will be asking now. Say just like an umbrella. Just like an umbrella. If that one is gone, someone from a Republic of Benin. Well, I don't know the umbrella. Thank you. Provided your intonation is just like his own. Provided you speak or pronounce English like him. Are you, Rafael? I'm telling you the fact. Let me tell you. I'm not working for CIA, but there are many CIA agents at Asuro. They are. Unraveling all this, they are revealing all these secrets to us. Let me tell you, when Abakari died, I'm just making an instance. When Abakari died last year, early last year, February, a bit, no, February this year, this year. Thank you so much. Someone that's, said, that's Thank you. Someone said, two weeks earlier, before Kiari's death was announced, someone said that Abakari was dead. Everybody started rumoring, Abakari's daughter started shouting and shouting. Then two weeks later, what happened? It was actually a truthful news. A truth. Thank you that he actually died. Who was that person? Let me give you the name. Nam de Kano. Nam de Kano knows virtually everything that is happening in our Go and dig your investigation deep, deep, deeper than you are doing now. You'll find out. There are good informers. I mean informers at Asso Rock that are giving us fresh news reports on what is going on at Asso Rock. They impose this man there. Mike, later, later, you will see many Nigerians that will write books 
of what is happening currently in Nigeria government. I'm telling you that Tinan Dekanu is one of them. And if guy is not taken, I'm going to be one of the authors of what has been transpiring in this devilish regime. Buhari, the first one died, is from Daura. The second one is from uh, uh, Sudan. He died of coronavirus. This third one is from the Jair Republic. Look at his skin. His skin looks younger than the former one. Do you understand? Former, former Buhari from Sudan. Then let alone the original Buhari from Doha. This current man is too fresh, too white. The complexion of his skin. Do you think you can beat the brain of the youth? You can't breathe, beat our brains. We are more intelligent than the cabals. Buhari did not make that statement there. The cabals did. Then, what about our chief uh, uh, NJC, National Judicial, Juri, Juri, Juridician, uh, Judiciary Council? Look at how old and stupid that man is. Do you think that anything good could, could come, come out from that man? From that man? From the stable of Nigerian judiciary? If that Deti Charia judge is heading NJC, Jesus Christ is the Lord. Mike, if you have better questions to ask me, Tanko Mohammed is a dirty fool. He's not supposed to be to head NJC. How could you just impose a Charia judge on us? Nothing good is coming out from the stable of Nigerian judiciary recently because the man there is not clear. We want somebody that will speak straight and it comes to be. We want somebody under the edges, umbrella of Trumpism. Colin Spade is paid. Trump, I love him. I like somebody like that. I love his regime. What is happening to him now? Americans are going to regret later. Mike, give me your thumb up. Good morning, my SUV. Uh, for the president, I know that he, the president has one problem. And that problem is the people advising him, they don't like him. You understand? People are advising Mr. President, they don't like Mr. President. If at all, then we have president. Because you, it's only on newspaper we hear that the president talks. Enough of this fake government we have in this nation. The president said he did not want the repeat of the NSAS protest. The same NSAS protest that they make a demand for something, and the government have not made the demand. Have they made the demand? They have not met up with the demand of the youth. And now he standing said, I did not want the repeat. That is why every official of Nigeria government, they talk. Because when they say that they want to protest in Lagos State that time, they, they commit, the commissioner of Lagos State Police say they will not tolerate another protest in Lagos State. Is that the statement that they, they, they support me? They should have come in a strategy or how to meet up to the demand of those people. Because what do we fight, what do you fight for is both to favor the police. Because you hear yesterday, in Zafar, all this place, they kidnap police. You understand? They kidnap them, take them to unknown place. And that is just the beginning because they, the police thought that the people, have, the people are fighting them, but they are not fighting them. They are not waiting to fight the masses, which is not good. The president said he did not want to see the repeat of answers. If he did not solve the problem of Nigeria now, you will see. Look at the South South. Yesterday, something happened. When the South South governor, and the, uh, the, the, the chief, the chief of South South, they come out and agree to have a meeting with Mr. President Potak Oabi, the chief of staff. The chief of staff has said that the meeting will hold. And all the whole state in South South, the governor, the chief, the leaders of the community, they come and sit in there waiting for uh, Gambari. And after to hear that Gambari told them that he's, on a, uh, he's in the airport, about coming to Portacot later in accordance that the meeting cannot come again because the president called emergency meeting because they despise the South South because I don't blame I don't blame the government I blame the governors in the South South and the leader there that are running after political posts and are not fighting for their people and allow the government to take over what belongs to them because a governor in a state you are there another person from another place and come and take what belongs to your state and you fold your hand. What do you think? They, they look there at someone that don't know anything. That is why they, they disgrace them. It's a humiliation. Because they see them like a non-entity, as a minus in the nation. Because if, 
If it is outside our call for that meeting and the president did not attend, I be the give us staff, cancel the meeting when people leave their state, come and gather in the meeting venue. Do you, you see what will happen now? You understand? Or maybe the time of Jonathan is there. The East, Northern people will call for a meeting and the, the president, chief of staff, did not attend. There will be a problem. You understand? There's something we have to put in place in this country because the people in Asoro, they are all confused and they are looking for problem. And when the problem comes, they cannot stand the problem. Look at that governor of uh, Ebony State. He was saying that the person, you know that, and I discovered that many of those governors are fighting for their interests, not the interests of the masses. The same person that the, the same party gave him a, 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 govern, a deputy governor for eight years and make him governor now for eight years. He now say the party is not fair to him. That's why he joined APC. He should tell the people that I'm going to this party because of my ambition. I want to become president. Because he, he said he, they are going to disgrace him, humiliate him, because you do not allow people that build APC. People that build APC are there. And he that come yesterday, presidential ticket will be given to you. Is it possible? It's not possible because they are fighting for their own personal interest, not the interest of the masses. That is what I had to tell them this morning. And the president should, even I thought we have leader or president, they should change their mindset towards the youth. Because I see danger coming like, they want to have meeting for Ferrari Shrine yesterday. They had to carry out the whole police to block Ferrari Shrine. That nobody should enter. And the meeting was held in another place. They think that this youth is it. We, the youth of now is not 1951. This is Vision 2020. And anything the youth want, they must do it. If the government said there is no protest, if the youth want to protest, they will still protest. That is what I want to tell the president. In what is just fake. Nobody believes in the word of that man as a president. Nobody believes his word. Nobody knows anything he talks. Everything he talks is fake. That's what I had to tell him this morning. I will begin by saying there is a popular saying in my dialect, in Igbo dialect, that Onye Megwara Nkeyanaka. That's by implication, that means when you are, you constantly push someone to the wall and the person is bearing it at a point it, 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 it will be stretched to a limit where the person can no longer bear it and when the person has to push back in, in fact it might be devastating so the Nigerian government have violated fundamental human rights of her own citizen. More grievous under the words of Buhari regime. I mean, across all facets of our human life, we are not secure. Economic-wise, there is no health security. There's not even food security. And people cannot go about their duties, I mean, their daily legitimate duties without being harassed. So what we are seeing now is, is a build up, is a cumulative, I mean, effect of of, of the pains, the, the gruesome pains the youth, I mean Nigerian citizens have have been bearing for over decades. And now they said, let us get it right for once. Not for once. They made their grievances known to the government. If this government is sensitive enough and responsible, they should have sat down and tell themselves the truth. That what these people are asking for is their right. They have been deprived of this over the years, over decades. And people are, 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 are not, I mean, I'm not holding the, the, the government accountable. The first time the Nigerian youth rose to the occasion and demand accountability, and demand for transparency, this so called clueless and callous government have to push uh, with, with, with all the arsenals of, 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 of an instrument of. of, of of security within their disposal. They launch all, all this against the youth and thinking that we can take that for granted. How old was Buhari when he ousted, when he committed treasoning offense against the Nigerian state, against democratically elected government of Sagari? How old was Buhari? 
about 27 or thereabouts. How old was Gowan when he became the president, I mean, the, 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 the commander uh, of M forces of the Federation of this country? How old was he? Within their 20, late 20 and the early 30s. And after um, over 80 years, or close to 80 years now, you are still holding tenaciously, tenaciously to power. And you wouldn't let you, you wouldn't let the youth take up the responsibility of leadership. And this stupid man, called Buhari, is now telling us that he will not take, uh, he will not tolerate any protest. Buhari, during 2012, led protests against uh, Jonathan Reddy. If he has been, if Jonathan had behaved the way he was behaving, he wouldn't have been alive to be, to have another chance to cause pain, to, to, to destroy, mislead this country. He would have been shot dead at that point of protesting, protesting scene. And look at, most youth have been sent beyond the, the world. These are youths who probably would have been the, the, the future president of Nigeria, if Nigeria still exists. They could have been the greatest scientists that the world is looking for. They could have been the greatest enterprises that we, I mean, out, outdo, I mean, the, the big gate of uh, America. You, you cut their lives for short, and you never had any sympathy over the, the loss of these lives. Recently, you celebrated the, the wedding of your daughter. You were happy that your daughter was alive. You were allowed to witness the daughter, the wedding of your daughter, the celebration of your daughter. Why you take pleasure in wasting the life of other children? The children of other parents, thinking that all will be well with you, it is impossible and it can never stand. Look, let me tell you, Nemesis will catch up with all these people. I mean, you can continue to keep power while you have nothing to do. You, you have exhausted your relevance. This man is irrelevant in every respect, in every judgment. Consider, is it electric, security-wise, social-wise? What, 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 and in fact, why is it? He is just here wasting the, 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 the economy of Nigeria. The, the taxpayers' money. You see, only borrowing and uh, relooting. I, I, I go through one documentary, I discovered that in in early 80s, that one dollar is equivalent to 80 kobo. One dollar of US is equivalent to 80 kobo, which is less than Nigerian one naira. You see, how, what happened suddenly that now, a dollar is equivalent to 470 naira. By implication, that simply means an average American is 407 times, 470 times better than a Nigerian citizen. You can imagine the, the widening of the gap. The, that, a, a, that, that a Nigerian citizen is backward. It's because the seven, 470 times backward with aggressive compared to an American citizen. And seeing all these indications, indices, that shows that this man has failed, the Nigerian state has failed. We are just uh, disillusioned. There is no way forward. Look at over Bali a month of the massacre of these youths at the toll gate, lucky toll gate. Nothing has been done to address those fundamental cravings of the youth. And you are stupidly coming out to tell me that you can't tolerate protest. A protest you led against Jonathan. A protest you led against against the the, the subsidy remover. We already led a protest against subsidy removal. He was not shot at the scene of the protest. He eventually by I will say by omission. I would say by commission, by omission, becomes the, the president of Nigerian state. A man is opening fire on innocent citizens. He enjoyed the, 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 the joy. He derived the joy seeing his children doing well. It was alleged that one of his sons has been, is the richest president's son.
on the surface of the earth. This is Buhari, and you, are, you take pleasure in wasting the lives of innocent uh, youths, in bringing untold hardship on us, which is unbearable at this point. And we are taking up our destiny in our hands, and you tell us that we should keep calm. Look at what's happened, of course. The, the Northerners have launched their Northern, Northern People's Forum, which shows that Nigeria already could no longer hold. Every region and section are now concentrating on how to build their own people and their own region. And that is what, of course, the Biafrans are doing. So we can't continue to live in denial, in the state of denial. The truth that Nigeria is no longer existing. Quote me anywhere. If Nigeria is existing, does the state of this country depicts that we are a nation? A nation that could not care for her people? A, a nation that is, I mean, infringes on fundamental human rights? A nation that will not allow people to aid their view? Of course, in no distant time, they may come against us. Because we are saying the truth in defense of freedom. And it doesn't matter what happens to us. Because we cannot live. I mean, it is, it is useless living for nothing. So if we die in the course of saying the truth, if we are booed and cajoled in the course of saying the truth, I will be fulfilled. But mind you that this state of anarchy, this state of injustice will no longer be tolerated. It is high time we must take our destiny in our hands. Otherwise, this set of recycled dustbin will continue to waste our resources and the life of uh, their people. Meet their demands first. You want to stop protest, meet the demands first. Dialogue with people. You don't come and distance yourself with Nigerians like, like, like as if they are rats and they are talking. They just come and say you won't allow, you won't, what mean you won't allow? You will not allow their, their, their civil rights, their civil rights to protest. Why some doesn't go well in favor of them? This is their life, this is their security. This is their livelihood. We are watching, I was uh, reading newspaper today. 12 police got abducted. Police. Security agents get us. What about you and I? What about our safety? Then they say police will not come and point you and I gun or come and violate our rights. When they themselves they can't even protect themselves, let alone Nigerians. So they should have what you talk is you're talking about is the restructuring of the police force, changing the police force. So the war is what he's actually doing is just completely wrong. And it seems this this present administration does not have uh, that respect for rule of law. They don't have respect for civil uh, civil rights. Human rights. Human rights. Yeah. They don't have respect for the law. They just think everything is false like, because it's Africa. If it's Africa, doesn't mean you can violate their rights. If you want force, we we'll react. Uh, the security operatives uh, went to African shrine, surrounded the place on this statement in me. Now, do you see another instance of protest surfacing in Nigeria? If the government fails to do anything, it will, it will, it will, it will still happen again. Nigeria's eye has opened. That's just the beauty about it. Our eye has opened. So, the Ensa's protest is something that should be still be going on until they meet our demands. We should not stop. So, they are trying to like put pressure on that thing. How will you go and surround somebody's crime? Do you collect warrants from the judge? Have you committed any crime? Protest is not the crime. Just simply because he said he's going to come up for the uh, protest. They want to silence it. They want to silence it because they've seen somebody that they can use, they, they, they see him as a picking for the youth. So, they can see that if they can. Shut down that channel. Maybe the youth won't protest. But then that, we don't have a leader in this protest. All of us are together. So they are trying. They, they only see him as a dad. Uh, light. Yes. Yes. That picking. Maybe they just, that's all. But they want to silence him. And the, uh, the antecedent of his father. So that's what they are trying to do. So it won't work. Even if you you surround him, you arrest him, you kill him, we will not stop protesting. This is our right. This is our life. We cannot come and put our life in arms way, put us in uh, put our lives in in, 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 in in chaos that you think you get away with it. This is our life. If you lose our life, we won't get it back. If you lose money, you can get it back. If you lose your property, you can get it back. But if you lose your life, you can't get it back. Alright, thank you so much. Yeah, so thank you very much for having me. Yeah. Thank you so much. And on this note, I say goodbye to you on today's edition of Bystanders at Nistings. Join us next time on the same platform. Michael Adekule still remains my name. You can subscribe to our sister channel talking about 50 plus. Join me on Facebook, Michael Tim Tayo at Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Hey, mama.